Hello, everyone, to community talk number four at the graph. Today, we're going to have a packed agenda talking about a number of things. We have a number of conferences that are happening right now and in the coming weeks. Martin is going to talk about that. We have Derek Data Nexus with us, who's going to talk about the Curator Catalyst. We talk a little bit about governance and some of the things that we have seen implemented here over the last few weeks and also dive deeper into the wave three RFP and grants announcement that we've made last week and last but not least we have index Africa here with us today as well. So we're going to have a little bit of a follow up to the GRTIQ podcast that you've all listened to last week and today is a chance for you to ask questions so they're going to come up later on in the segment and any questions you already want to ask them feel free to post them in the chat but we are going to start off with the introduction of our newest member at the foundation nick hansen welcome nick if you are speaking you are on mute thank you very much oliver Great to be here. <laughs> How are you, Nick? Doing great, great to have you. So tell us about Nick Hansen. You know, who is Nick Hansen uh, in, in real world? Well, hello, everybody. Uh, Nick Hansen, uh, so glad to be here. And you might recognize the voice, which we probably have something to say about in a minute here, Oliver. But uh, my background professionally is in commercial real estate and marketing and uh, based in the United States. Spent the last 10 years of my life as the chief marketing officer for an investments firm. Got involved uh, with the graph back in December of last year. And I've become really passionate about the project, about Web3, and really looking forward to contributing in a full-time manner at the foundation. So what, what initially attracted you to the graph? What was sort of the instant connection that you had there? Well, the truth is, I think my entry into the graph is a lot like uh, so many others, which was... You know, you kind of saw uh, a lot of discussion on Twitter. You started seeing communities crop up and you tried to figure out what this thing was because early impressions were that this was an infrastructure based project that would be the foundation for what was already uh, becoming very exciting in the Web3 uh, DeFi space. And so uh, when I first became aware of the graph, it was intrigue about what this thing was. I think the positioning as the uh, Google blockchain raised my eyebrows and piqued my interest. But then as I got more familiar with the people and the different individuals and stakeholders in the graph community, my passion you know, became fire. And I realized that there were a like-minded, shared vision for what uh, people wanted to accomplish and the potential impact in the world in communities all across the world that really, again, became the, the, the real thrust in getting involved and wanting to contribute in my own way. Yeah, and you've done a great job with that as the voice of GRTIQ, which we all know, I'm sure, in the community at this point. And you've really brought out so much insight around not just the graph, but the people that are working in the graph. And, you know, question here that I have, you know, with regards to what you have experienced as, as the GRTIQ podcast host What's been your biggest impression and reflecting on your experience having met so many stakeholders at the graph, you know, over the last six months? So I think the, the, the main thing that I've learned is that there are real people doing real work all across the world in attempting to build Web3 and, and the graph. And so, you know, I think it's so dispersed and it can be a little complicated, especially for people like me that are non-technical. I think there can be a lot of you know, cloudiness as to what's going on and who's participating and where are the people. But uh, because of the podcast, I've had the opportunity to meet and speak with so many, I've come to realize that there really are just people fully committed, fully invested in building this. And just because you know, they're in Germany or Africa or um, somewhere in South America doesn't mean uh, that this thing isn't tangible and driven by passion. And so for me, the great insight of being the voice of GRTIQ is the tangibility of this technology and the people behind it. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, it's, it's, especially once you get closer into the project, you realize the graph has no borders, right? It's one big family 
across the entire globe. So speaking of your role now at the foundation, so what can we expect from you in terms of contributions going forward? What's your focus going to be? So I'm very excited to announce that I'll be working at the foundation in the role of helping build and deploy the Advocates Program. And so there's been a lot of buzz about the Advocates Program, what it is, when it's going to launch. And uh, I myself am an advocate, and my story is reflective of, I think, what the Advocate Program can do for others, which is lower the barrier of entry to participate and create value in the graph and in the broader Web3 space. And so my focus will be to find others that want to participate and become an advocate in their local community. And I hope you'd reach out to me. Uh, there'll be a lot of opportunities, a lot of announcements coming, but that'll be my primary focus. And I couldn't be more excited about it. Awesome. Exciting. And I'm super excited that you've joined the graph and I look forward to working alongside with you. I'm sure everyone in the community feels excited about having you sort of at the helm of you know, the global outreach, uh, given the experience that you bring in to the graph that you've gained, not only with the graph, but also in your professional career. So welcome to the team. Thank you, Oliver. All right. So with that, we are shifting gears to conferences that we have. We've got quite a few, and we typically don't do slides, but we've just prepared one so we can actually uh, kind of get a structure on all the things that are happening. So let me just share that. And Martine is walking us through all the things that are happening now and in the coming weeks. Yes, thanks, Oliver. Um, so basically, th starting this week or tomorrow, there's a lot of events happening in Lisbon, um, and the graph is all over them. Um, the first one is LISCON, a conference of around 1,000 people starting tomorrow, uh, where Yaniv is opening the conference with a main stage talk at 10 a.m. Uh, and Adit is speaking 11.20 a.m. also on main stage. And then both of them are participating in panels. So if you're around, don't, don't doubt on showing up. There's a booth, there's um, swag to get and everything that happens in a conference. Um, there's around 12 people from at least the graph ecosystem that I know that will be around, but probably more that I haven't heard. Uh, so don't be shy and show up at the booth. And um, after that, there's It Lisbon, which is a hackathon starting this Friday, where also Yaniv is, uh, is going to be speaking at the opening ceremony. And then a workshop given by Simon on building subgraphs and um, probably around NFTs. And um, next week, there's NearCon, this conference around the near blockchain, where Adam and Leo are going to be speaking. Uh, Leo is speaking the first day of the conference, which is Tuesday, 26, and um, Adam is speaking on Wednesday. Uh, and the week after Web Summit, it's a great um, big conference of four days happening also here in, in Lisbon. And there's going to be a, a booth um, from the foundation. There's going to be Rim attending and also a couple of people from a Node, like Simon giving a workshop, Nader, and probably others. Um, and after that, which ends on Thursday, Friday and Saturday is Cosmos Community Conference where Tegan from Agenote and Joseph from Figment will be speaking at uh, different uh, times on different stages. And the week after that, so like four weeks um, from now, there's the Solana Breakpoint Conference where like Tegan and Leo are gonna be speaking from Agenote, but there's also gonna be a lot of people from Streaming Fast and Figment attending. Um, so there's a huge amount of presence of the graph here in Lisbon for the next month. All right. Thank you, Martin. So a lot of stuff coming up and going on. So uh, keep track of the graph Twitter account and on this one. Um, we will share a lot of information, a lot of the things that are happening, sometimes even in real time um, of, of events uh, or AMAs that might, might occur. So make sure in the coming weeks to keep a close eye on the graph Twitter account that will you know, give you all the details as they are happening as well. So thank you, Marty. So what do we have next? We have Derek with us from the Curation Catalyst. No, he's not on yet. So we're gonna, we're gonna punt on that a little bit. Let's talk about then the indexer survey that we have launched. So last week we have announced an indexer survey that will be open until mid-November, you know, 1115. 
and what we will be uh, doing there or what we have the opportunity uh, to do as an indexer is to really share deeper you know feedback on a number of questions that we have structured with other indexers together and you know that goes into the indexing experience into the operations into you know how much time you invest and you know how uh, you overall you know rate the graph as a protocol to engage in also relative to other engagements that you might have as a validator so it's uh, really a, a deeper um survey that also you know we ask if you want to meet with somebody from the foundation and the core dev if you want to even have a follow-up discussion on your feedback you have that opportunity as well and this is all geared towards understanding what indexers experience and what they need and want and as such we will take that and really take a good look at all the answers that you provide to understand know how that should inform the roadmap ahead, especially with regards to some of the protocol enhancements that directly in, uh, impact the indexer experience. So we have a link that I will share here momentarily and you know you can check that out. You can also um, see that in Discord and in the forum where we have also uh, created a post for it where you have links to the survey as well. And I will share it here shortly in the chat too. Okay, and now we have Derek with us. Derek, we have to pull him up uh, as a host, I believe, so he can speak. Ah, yeah, there he is. Hey, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. How are you doing, Derek? Doing well. Uh, excited about the future. Uh, <laughs> so, Very so good. Be, yeah, so we're going to be starting a, uh, a bi-weekly call um, called the Curation Catalyst Group. Um, and initially, this was a group just that's uh, fairly familiar with the protocol um, related to curation uh, and how those contracts work and all of that. And so we're opening this to um, a more broad uh, sphere, I should say. So curators that are interested in learning more about, you know, how the protocol works and all that type of stuff as well as opening um, more curators for a chance to uh, discuss governance, suggestions, uh, different things that can be done to enhance the curator experience. Um, and then also just answer basic questions on, um, you know, how to evaluate a subgraph, you know, looking at some of the more technical aspects of that. Uh, those are things that we'll be able to do in this time frame. So it'll, it'll operate somewhat similar to the indexer office hours, though it's gonna focus more on the curation side of things. Um, so we have that on the, uh, the graph calendar. So uh, if that's something that you guys are interested in, I definitely welcome you to participate and it uh, should be a good learning experience for all of us. Yeah, awesome. So reflecting a little bit on how this has evolved, um, and Derek, you've been you know a leading charge in that. Um, sure. Curator, you know, community has been extremely active from you know day one of curation launch, which was great to see, and a lot of the proposals that that are out there and that have also been implemented um, already, you know, are sort of have been generated, you know, within the you know, curator community and the curator catalyst was a group that was um, sort of like, you know, leading that discussion in many ways also on the forum, you know, been very active. So it's been just great to see. Also great to see that you're going public now and and really, you know, give everyone the chance to get get involved in it. So awesome initiative. Yeah. You find the details yeah. on the graph calendar where you can see it's every other th Thursday, right? Yep, every other Thursday. And then, and Oliver, I'm not sure because I, I came in a little bit late, but I'm not sure if you already went over um, any of the governance changes that have happened recently, but there is something curator related that I feel like is something that's uh, exciting for our leg of the network. Yeah, we're going to talk about governance um, in, a, in a minute. We haven't uh, gone to that subject yet. Okay, perfect. I just didn't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> All good. Very good. Thank you, Derek, for, for that yeah. uh, overview and the introduction of the Curator Catalyst to the community. Awesome. Absolutely. You also have a, by the way, you also have a Discord channel. Maybe you can also share that link in the chat with uh, the rest here so they can also check out that. Yep, I'll shoot that over now. Okay, next up, this one is for Reem. 
we've seen an announcement coming out yesterday, or was it last week? Oh, it was last week, actually, announcing the Graph Education Series in partnership with Encode Club. So, Reem, what is that all about? Yeah, um, so I feel like the concept of time is definitely impassing all of us these days. Uh, totally fair, uh, Oliver, but uh, we're excited to be uh, collaborating with Encode Camp. Um, what they do is uh, uh, kind of like a, I think Polygon's worked with them as well, where they do clubs uh, and series where you can get educated on the graph. Um, now, what's really neat about them is that they're going to expose a, a ton of really uh, new networks and um, uh, demographics that we haven't really, I think, tapped into as much in the past. Uh, and that's a network of college and university students. Uh, so this is probably going to see about anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 students across the world um, uh, participating in an eight-part series um, covering things like, you know, what is the graph from um, maybe like an open data uh, uh, economy standpoint, um, how to build subgraphs, um, you know, an AMA with Tegan actually is also happening, but um, we are going to be releasing a full schedule, uh, I believe sometime next week, uh, if they haven't already on their website. Uh, but keep an eye out for uh, ENCODE Club's uh, further announcements as they are going to be coordinating this. Uh, but there's definitely going to be a lot of collaboration from us as well. Um, and who knows, uh, you know, later on in the future, you might see more of these pop up as um, students are, you know, more intrigued with, uh, you know, NFTs. And uh, I have family of mine that are, you know, in high school right now, and they're asking these questions. So um, it wouldn't be surprising if there's a lot of folks in um, higher education that are also looking to see what they could do in Web3 and how they can get involved. Um, so don't be surprised if you see more of these in the future uh, where we collaborate with other uh, universities or networks where we can um, educate more students and, and, and bring them onto the Web3 space. Amazing. Great, great announcement. I, I always love the initiatives where we create tangible opportunities for people to engage. And this is definitely right up that alley. Great stuff. Okay, we switch gears to the forum. We're not going to go deep into a segment discussion, but want to touch on a forum post. Pedro will walk us through this. The Graph Indexer Kubernetes Automation and Operations Toolkit, just to highlight you know, the discussions that are currently going on on that. Pedro, can you tell us more about it? Yeah, sure thing. Hi, everyone. So yeah, this one was from Eugene. Uh, Eugene's from Chainstack. Uh, they've shared in the forum this new, quote unquote, Kubernetes Automation and Operations Toolkit, which was built as part of a, a Graph uh, Foundation grant. This one is one of the different solutions we've been seeing uh, to help out indexers manage their stack. Um, as you know, indexers do spend a lot of time working with servers or cloud-based resources to then uh, essentially instantiate or deploy their own software uh, in there, make sure that everything's running properly with minimal downtime and latency so we can all serve our consumers a little bit better, obviously. And yeah, in this case, this particular tool, <clears throat> it's pretty cool. Um, you can use things like Terraform or Elm and Kubernetes. Uh, no, no need to go into the actual details, but it essentially is, allows you to go from zero to uh, deployed servers and then the whole indexer software suite deployed on those servers, basically. And it works directly with Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, AWS as well. And it's pretty cool because um, we've been seeing a lot of grantees building this type of automation tooling. It's something that we covered a lot during indexer office hours quite deeply. Not We're not going to do it here. No, uh, no need for it. But this is just to highlight that... Um, as, as Oliver was just mentioning, we have this survey go, uh, go, going on. And it's pretty important for us to figure out exactly which sort of tools or solutions the indexers are mostly using so that, um, yeah, we can understand like if we need to um, update these solutions to add more components like the fire hose for, for, uh, for, for, for like an example in the future, we'll talk, talk about it soon as well. Uh, yeah, we can use those uh, existing projects uh, already. And it's becoming clear that uh, we need to find a way to let the community aware of all of these projects being built around uh, the, the graph. So for this reason, we'll also be 
maintaining um, some sort of catalog in, in the future so that uh, you guys can can later on check up check on and this will be um, available in the upcoming web website as well awesome great segue into the next segment which is just governance updates if you want to talk a little bit about uh, the first one that we want to share on the firehose pr merge sure yeah so like i mentioned uh this uh, last last week the firehose this component that's been initially designed and developed by streaming fast one of the uh, new core devs that has joined the team um so this has been integrated into graph node one of the key uh components let's say that uh, uh indexers run this was integrated as a new block stream, and right now the priority is to work on to work with indexers um, in early staging or sorry in uh, yeah early testing, because this is a new communication protocol. It's based on gRPC, and we need to make sure there is consistency with the typical uh, RPC-based interface that uh, we've been using in the past. Um, I'll share a link to uh, to the forum uh, because um, I believe Adam has now been um, so <clears throat> we've agreed that we'll we will be sharing these updates from the core devs as well in the forum, and Adam has just posted this like a couple of hours ago, so I'll just leave it in the forum as well if you want to comment in there. Um, I think it's a huge win actually. It's pretty cool. Um, it shows that core devs are working nicely. And um, this will allow us to standardize the way, like having a standard way of to more easily or, or yeah, to more easily integrate other chains in the future, especially the high throughput ones, because that's where uh, the firehose actually uh, shines. For instance, we have Figment also doing great work on this front. Um, yes, and Fig Figment, as you know already, it's also a, a, a core dev. And yeah, we'll have some more news in the future about this. So you definitely want to stay stay tuned. Uh, there's not much I can share right now. Um, and uh, Oliver, I don't I don't know if we have time, but I believe we have Cohen on the call, and I think him, so we would be prepared. I don't know Cohen if I don't know Oliver if you have time to hear from Cohen his own um, experience with the firehose because I know he's been testing it as well as an indexer. Yeah. Awesome. Let's bring him up. Love to hear it. <clears throat> hey, so I am uh, been running uh, or experimenting with a firehose system, um, and the more that I learn about firehose, and the more that I run into problems with the classical indexing, in particularly on on BSC, uh, the more excited I get about uh, about firehose. Um, it 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 radically changes a few of the concepts that we that we know about blockchains in a sense or, or, or about processing blockchains. Um, mostly there is a lot of um, sequential process and that's why we, we need the archive nodes and we need these huge amounts of storage. Um, and in a way the approach done by streaming fast with Firehose is that a lot of these things can be broken down into uh, smaller parallel processes um, that means that there, there is a potential for quite a big gain in time. Um, and the Firehose system itself, it, uh, it relies on a full node rather than an archive node. And to give a comparison, um, I think an Ethereum archive node is now just under nine terabyte or somewhere around that. And a BSC archive node is already 15 terabytes. Um, and that needs to be all NVMe storage or you just get bust. Um, and uh, uh, um, the, the component in the Firehose system that does that is it, it only needs to be a full node, which is roughly one terabyte. Um, so there is a major difference in, in terms of the storage requirements. Uh, and the fact that it's only a full node rather than an archive node, those archive nodes, they can be quite challenging um, to support. Um, Ethereum archive nodes we have the amazing Aragon system that came up. Uh, I think that that really will change things for Ethereum. But on BSC, for example, and on Polygon, we don't have those. And I see those nodes go down into database compaction where they don't keep up to the chain anymore. So you need to run several of those. So you need 
two, three, four times of, of those 15 terabytes of NVMe storage and the, the server that goes with it. So the, the Firehose system could make a really big difference in there. Um, and awesome. one of the other things that I see on, on this, and this is apparently a, a, a problem that for hosted service also sees that on those low block time um, chains like uh, BSC and Polygon and a number of others, um, sometimes the response from the RPC, from the archive node, is incomplete or is blank and the index that doesn't know better than this is the correct information. So what happens on, on some of our systems is that um, a pair created event doesn't get caught by the indexer and therefore the entire database doesn't have any information on that pair and the volume and the trading and the and the price evolution, uh, which is a major problem. And on the classical um, indexing way the only uh, solution that you have is to roll back uh, which means you increase uh, you um, introduce a lag in your data if you need to go back in in a month in time because you missed it a month ago um, there's a question why you missed it why you're only realizing it now but still say you missed it a month ago you need to go back a month ago and you potentially need to index a very heavy subgraph um, for that missing month again. Uh, and with Firehose, there should be the possibility to almost surgically uh, correct that missing pair and only for that missing pair, um, find all the, the, the missing data, so to say, without affecting any other of the, maybe there is like um, 100 pairs or something, those other 100 pairs, they are not um, affected by trying to fix this, the, the problem with uh, that one pair that you happen to have missed. Um, so yeah, Firehose in, in many ways could bring, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely worth calling it indexing 2.0 um, mm -hmm. because it brings so much more potential to the, to the grab and to the indexing ecosystem. Yeah, great feedback there, Cohen. <clears throat> Sounds like Firehose has mastered to find the needle of the, in the state the haystack of the past that, that's amazing thank you yeah. for the feedback cool awesome okay let's talk about governance more um you can see uh, expect a post that that i will probably post in the next week or so that will outline our existing governance protocol governance process in a little bit more detail and answer some of the common questions that we see being raised in the community. And that is really geared towards, you know, giving everyone just a better understanding, how do we move a governance proposal from start to the finish line? And that is something you can expect to be posted in the next week or so. On the governance side itself, we have seen a couple of implementations. First one is publish and signal, which happened a few weeks back ago already. So now subgraph developers have the opportunity to be the first curator on the bonding curve, which is a big feature that has been anticipated in the curator community. And also what has gone live last night is a reduction of curation tax from two and a half percent down to one percent. So that significantly reduces the cost for subgraph updates for both subgraph developers as well as curators, since they both share the burden of that upgrade cost. And again, another significant upgrade. We've heard a lot you know, about that being requested and uh, excited that that went through. So those are actual um, proposals that have been implemented at this point. And we have a number of different discussions out there in the forum that I encourage everyone to check out. And we're not going to go deep into forum discussions here today, but we have a number of proposals around curations and that is around showroom, around flattening the bonding curve. There are deep discussions going on. And I'm sure that when we have the curator catalyst launching here, uh, shortly, then we're going to be able to talk much more deeper about some of the proposals that we have posted in the forum on that. Okay, our next feature segment is 
our wave three RFPs and grants announcement that was released last week. Reem, tell us more about it. Yeah, hey guys. Um, so last week we announced that we are funding over $1.5 million uh, towards wave three grants. Uh, we have over 35 grant participants this time around and uh, we're excited uh, to bring a new wave of grantees on board. Um, as mentioned, and something that I really like to um, uh, conceptualize this for and illustrate for all of you folks is, um, you know, the graph is not being built by the team that's facilitating these calls or uh, bringing everybody together. It's really everybody in this call has, you know, a small piece or a big piece or a role to play in uh, growing the ecosystem. Uh, so I encourage you again to think about what you think would be really great uh, for the graph ecosystem, whether it's from a protocol improvement standpoint, a community initiative that you feel like maybe is even lacking in your own community. Um, uh, a DAP or a subgraph that you think uh, could really be a game changer in the space, um, or even a tool that could help any of our ecosystem participants, whether that be indexers, delegators, or curators, or even subgraph developers, um, um, and, and make you know their roles in the ecosystem uh, a bit more efficient. Um, we are going to also be announcing a new wave and new batch of RFPs in the next uh, coming weeks, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, a few grants that I'm excited about this wave is um, one, I think uh, I attended ETCC over the summer earlier in July um, and Vitalik discussed the need for more um, social tools in the space. Like we've really mastered NFTs, we've mastered DeFi. Um, something that we uh, can really do a bit more uh, is, is look at the, the social media ecosystem uh, and really encourage higher quality posting um, and um, form the basis of users' online identities. So um, one that I'm really excited about this time around and my ears, uh, my e eyes and ears are peeled on uh, is Poster. Uh, Poster is aiming to be uh, the a decentralized censorship resistant and highly available social media app, uh, which will be powered by the graph. Um, so we're really excited to see what will come out of their, uh, their project there. Um, but other ones that uh, I think uh, can really be a game changer as well uh, are a few of our community grants, um, such as um, our uh, uh, um, uh, ENCODE uh, camp, uh, club, sorry, uh, that one's going to be really fun, um, as well as, um, sorry, I'm just uh, remembering, yes, the curation video guides. Uh, so I think those that one actually started out as an RFP. RFPs are also grants. Uh, they're just ones that are ideas that are posed by the community that we post up. Um, so uh, the grantee there really came forward and actually provided us um, a sample of a video uh, when he applied for his, uh, for, his for, for the RFP. And I think that's such a great way to uh, showcase that you're already doing the work uh, and you know, you're already owning the role. Um, so maybe that could even inspire you folks in terms of what sort of applications you could put through. But um, like I've mentioned and reiterated time and time again, there's no idea too small or too big. Uh, feel free to put them out there. And if you have any questions at all, or if you'd like to you know, if you're not really sure, uh, I've seen a lot of successes come out of the graph forum as well. Uh, so feel free to post your ideas on the forum, uh, see how the community engages with it. And typically, I think most of the ones that have been received positively well um, have actually become grantees. So that's a really great way to gauge from the community where the needs are. And also uh, put your uh, grant more even forward in that uh, in that pipeline, and um, you know we'll, we'll definitely look into that a bit more with you, and and be excited about it as well. So feel free to ping me any notes. Uh, as mentioned before as well, uh, even though we're announcing all of these waves, it doesn't mean that we're not interviewing and that we're not um, you know having these conversations and looking through applications. So applications are always open; they're never closed. Um, and really excited to see what sort of ideas you all come up with. Thank you, Reem. Applications are open at any time. There is no deadline. I think that's you know, a key message that I like to reiterate as well. And uh, you know, the RFPs and grants initiatives is such a great way to enter the graph you know, community if you are thinking about engagement. And it doesn't matter if it's technical or non-technical, it's about ideas. 
and there's so much you know good coming out of the grand ideas it's, it's just amazing and that is you know also a great way you know to deepen your engagement i mean we've just half introduced nick you know to the foundation team and he's been a grantee as well and you know it, it just leads to bigger and better things if that is something that excites you and and you you know pour your heart and soul into that and I can tell you also that with Reem, you don't find any other person more passionate about wanting to help you succeed in that role. So really encourage you to, to take, take advantage of that. Okay. With that, we're now turning our attention to Index Africa. And Nick is going to lead us through the segment. If anyone would like to ask any question to the Index Africa team, Rich and Boyd, they're both here with us right now. Uh, I'm sure you've listened to the GRTIQ podcast last week, which was one of the most amazing ones I've, I've listened to. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat. And with that, I hand it over to Nick. Thanks, Oliver. And again, thank you, everybody, for joining today's call. I want to post a link to the episode of Index Africa with GRTIQ in case you haven't seen it. So that just posted there. I also want to welcome Boyd and Richie. Are you there? Can you guys hear me? I need to unmute their lines there. While they're getting settled in, um, I want to just point out the fact that all indexers tell a unique story, right? And it's a great opportunity for uh, delegators and members of the graph community to learn more about what makes indexers unique by joining calls like this. And so uh, today I wanna shine a light on Index Africa, who has a very unique story. Richie and Boyd, welcome. Thanks very much, Nick, thank you for having us. Yeah, pleasure to be here with you. Great to have you, you're joining us from South Africa. And I think there's uh, the story starts there. Uh, why don't we go to you first, Richie? What can you tell us about Index Africa's indexer operation? So the, very simply, I think, you know, Index Africa has got a simple mission and that is first and foremost to be a, a world-class indexing node to support the graph protocol. Um, but further to that is that we want to use these incredible innovations in, in Web3 to be social change agents in the ground here on the continent. And we want to educate and uplift the future generations of rural Africans so that they can in turn participate in the future crypto economy. Um, and so as I got involved with the graph about a year ago with the curator program, um, I, I then quickly saw an opportunity to set up an indexing node on the continent to give the graph some regional diversification from other indexing nodes. And that was kind of the journey that we, we, we got going on earlier this year. Um, and since then, quite a lot has evolved from there. Well, I think anybody that listens to the podcast that you did will uh, immediately latch onto this idea of how you're disrupting traditional philanthropy. Again, I want to encourage anybody on the call today, if you have a question, type it into the chat. I'd be happy to ask it. But Boyd, what can you tell us about this real central idea or mission behind what Index, or Index Africa is doing with regards to decentralized philanthropy or DeFi with a PH? Yeah, Nick, I, I have, um, I was astounded as a layman coming into the space, learning as I went by this philosophical idea that the network, rather than extracting value, the network produces value for participants who are involved in it. That, that idea just really, um, really sparked me. And I came from a traditional philanthropy background where every year, you know, you head out to raise money for your foundation, for your organizations donors part with their money and then the next year you have to go back and ask again where this model became absolutely fascinating to us is we saw an opportunity for a delegator to stake onto the node they hold on to their tokens um, the node in return produces rewards we flow a portion of those rewards into an education um, center that is doing digital education as well as uh, adult literacy and various other literacies. But really the digital aspect of the education that's happening there is what excites us. And then those young learners who are becoming digitally savvy can in turn participate in the future coming economy. What's amazing about it is that delegator is supporting um, the upliftment of these people whilst earning APY, 
whilst being able to pull their, their stake out at any point. Now that is an incredible, the potential for that to disrupt um, traditional philanthropy is absolutely remarkable. It's, it's the foundation of that is absolute sustainability. And so we developed the DeFi model, decentralized philanthropy, as a way to start exploring how we could change philanthropy using this incredible graph network protocol. And so far, out of our node, we've already put 80 young, vibrant African learners into our learning center. And I'm just in incredibly excited about the abundance that is central to this model. Um, everywhere you look, someone is, is, is seeing value. The indexer is seeing value. The delegator is seeing value through their APY. Um, the learner is seeing value. And that's just an incredibly exciting idea. Well, thank you for that, Boyd. And that was really something that struck me during the uh, recording of the podcast is, again, a guest like yourself noting the uh, non-extractive of value or extraction of value that the graph plat uh, platform provides for people that want to participate. It's value additive and it, uh, the barriers to entry are very low, which kind of leads us into another question, which is, you know, both Richie and Boyd in their phot photographs here. And then if you do a little research, you'll see that they're in the Safari business and kind of migrated into the Web3 business. So going back to you, Richie, what can you tell us about yours and Boyd's background in the Safari and then kind of entering into that Web3 space? So, you know, I, I got involved in the safari industry because I came from a digital media background and I saw an opportunity, this was around 2009, 2008, to start putting digital media on the internet to bring people to Africa. Um, and this was right at the time as, um, you know, big centralized social networks are starting to get going, um, like Facebook and YouTube. Um, and so I, I went and became a wildlife filmmaker in the safari industry, bridging technology and, um, and the wilderness. And that got me exposed to tech um, in the industry. But further to that point, it also got me exposed to the region in which I was operating in and the rural communities and villages surrounding the wilderness, wilderness areas and surrounding the game reserves. And it got me exposed to the work that Boyd was very involved in, which was setting up educational opportunities for these rural learners. Um, particularly in the world of the digital education. Um, and so as things evolved, um, we, we, we were always looking for ways to leverage the safari and tourism industry to create broader opportunities for these rural learners um, and eventually to, to find ways to give them jobs um, once, they, once they would graduate. Um, so then fast forwarding, just an interest in the, techs, uh, in, in the tech world really got me int interested in the Web3 space, um, particularly in, in, in the idea of smart contracts as Ethereum started to evolve. Um, and then when a friend of ours um, told us about the graph, um, we really started to look more closely at it. Um, and that, that was a journey that began about 18 months ago. And yeah, that's, that's where we find ourselves today. Boyd, another sub element or thread of the podcast that we recorded was this idea that you came back to many times, which was innovation happens when unexpected things come together. As uh, Richie just laid out, I mean, you both have backgrounds in Safari. You've got some phil philanthropic, you know, ventures that you've been involved with. You're in South Africa. And yet here we are at the cusp of innovation and technology in the Web3 space, and these things bumped in together. What was the idea behind this reiteration of when unexpected things come together, innovation is the outcome? Well, Nick, you know, you, I, we were looking at what is clearly, uh, you know, if you think of Web3 as the future economy, and certainly even as a layman, you just need to start to understand it a little bit to really become a believer. Um, so we were seeing this emerging. Uh, at the same time, we were operating on the ground every day in learning centers with some of um, with young, some of the most rural people, people who traditionally haven't had access to education, and we were we were creating that access. And then it just became abundantly clear to us that somehow we need to put these worlds together. One is we have a system that generates value in the graph protocol, and two, we have a young dynamic learner who is hungry to participate in a future economy if we can just skill them, uh, upskill them. And in fact, I wish, I, I think I said this on the podcast, Nick, I wish I could take you into these learning centers and you could see the tremendous um, 
excitement around learning that there is. Uh, if we can arm these young, vibrant people with skills, then they are going to participate and create innovation in the space. And so suddenly we found ourselves, you know, as connected uh, to Web3, ex-Safari guys who had a hand in philanthropy, who were interested in generating economies for mo the most rural people. And it just started to come together that we could, in fact, set up a world-class indexing node and start to funnel rewards into these learning centers um, and create this strange abundant synergy. At the same time, that opportunity would uplift um, uplift these young learners who in turn will then be able to participate. You know, part of what is central to our strategy and central to our DNA is we are believers that Africa is still largely untapped. Um, there's tremendous potential here. There's tremendous vibrancy. There's, tr there's scope for innovation. And it's unique that we know how to operate on the ground here. Now to connect something as powerful as the graph uh, into that ecosystem, it's just you know, it's so exciting. And I think I said it to you on the podcast, there's this, one of the central, like most grounding philosophies in Africa is a philosophy called Ubuntu. And Ubuntu says, I am because of you. It, what it is, it's a collective consciousness. Um, I get to experience the deepest parts of myself through my relationships with other people. And as you travel around Africa, you find that everywhere. This, this sense of relationality. We need each other. We need to work together to get by. And really, you know, that means that African people are innately and innately and deeply prepared to be a part of what Web3 is going to be and could be. Yeah, I mean, it, it, boy, it really just triggers a thought in me. You know, what, what Index Africa is at its core trying to do um, in this philosophical construct is like blockchain, uh, like Bitcoin created the internet of money per se, um, we're seeking to try and create the internet of African wisdom and see how that can have its impact on the world. And I'll give you an example with, you know, what we're doing with the, these learners in the, in the Good Work Foundation D Digital Academy. You know, right now we, we're using a lot of the funding to teach young learners how to get their, their digital skills going, but we're setting up a, a blockchain academy we're getting kids going on playing games like Axie Infinity so that they can start to earn rewards for themselves um, so that they don't need to go out and find a traditional job. Um, and we're looking at creating a new generation of artists um, that can start to produce NFTs and digital goods um, so that they can take their unique contribution in terms of their souls, in terms of their essence, in, in terms of their worldview, and put that into a global marketplace um, where value can be ascribed to it. Um, and that for me is, is really this philosophical idea of this collective consciousness um, and, and, and bringing it into the Web3 space. And, and I sh we should say too, Nick, that, you know, this is, we're, we're at the beginning of this journey and it's incredibly exciting for us. And we're, we're being asked to innovate and learn and discover as we go. And, that, and, and ultimately what we want to build is a model that becomes... Um, the the model that everyone looks to when they set out to to create value uh, and and really like ground this idea of DeFi PHI as a viable future model for philanthropy around the world. Well, I want to encourage anyone on the call, if you have a question, go ahead and type it in again. We'd be happy to ask it on your behalf or uh, Richie and Boyd have made themselves available if you have a question. Uh, talking about platforms, you know, obviously the graph has been a platform for Index Africa to do and pursue a lot of great things in Africa. Another thing you're doing is working with others to build Graphrica. Uh, we should probably highlight your efforts there. Richie, what can you tell us about Graphrica and uh, how to participate in it? So Graphrica, well, let me contextualize it this way. Um, much like the Index Africa and the Good Work Foundation relationship is to uplift a future generation of rural learners, the idea behind Graphrica is to take um, Africa's most sophisticated Web3 talent, pair it together, use the graph protocol, uh, and see what can emerge from that in terms of ideas and innovations. Um, and so what we did was we set up a Discord channel and we really started to, to call out um, and build regional communities of people um, in West Africa. We're working on finding people in North Africa. We've got some relationships in East Africa, and obviously we've got South Africa. 
Uh, and I see um, my colleague Jerry Okolo is on the call. Shout out to him. He is running the, the West African um, uh, group there. Um, and what we do is we run weekly training um, for Web3 developers to understand how to use subgraphs, how to develop subgraphs, how the protocol works. And then we have Thursday meetings, which are more philosophical ideation discussions. We call them lean coffees, where people can participate by you know, posing questions. And we have sort of 10, 10 minute slots where we discuss these things. And this is the starting point is to really seed the community and seed the ideas in the community um, and, and, and see what starts to pop. You know, and already there's amazing ideas around where the big opportunities are in, in, in terms of things like media, in terms of things like remittances, uh, the DeFi space. And ideally what I would see is out of all of this is taking really great talent, pairing it with capital and then allowing ideas to, to catalyze themselves um, all, all using the power of the graph to do that. So that, that is it in a nutshell. I have a follow-up question on that. This is Oliver. Hey, Richie. Um, the Lean Coffee you know, meetings that you have. I know that Simon was from Edge and Node was part of one uh, last week, I believe. Uh, is that something that is open to everyone or essentially uh, is it a targeted audience that you have? Well, you know, it is open to everyone, but the context is around Web3 in Africa. That, that's kind of the focal point. Um, so by all means, we would love to have you on there. We'd, we'd love to get a diverse... D We'd love to get more diverse opinions and perspectives on there. Um, but the focus is that we're seeking to look for African ideas in an African context that use the power of Web3. Well, I want to thank Boyd and, and Richie for joining us with Index Africa. Again, if you haven't had a chance to listen to the GRTIQ podcast, episode 33, that spotlights uh, the work they're doing and their index operation, then you really ought to check it out. They go in a lot more depth and provide really cool details about the work they're doing in Africa. Uh, maybe real quick, Rich and Boyd, uh, if someone wants to learn more about Index Africa, Grafrica, what are some of the ways they can uh, reach out? So the easiest way to learn about Index Africa is just visit the website, indexafrica.io. Uh, we also have a Telegram channel, which um, I know, Nick, you posted a link to on your, uh, your, your podcast. Um, and then the Grafrica Discord channel. Um, I, I'd say the easiest way is to just reach out to me on Telegram or on the Index Africa channel if you're a Web3 developer or if you want to participate, um, and I'll happily share a link and invite you. Um, likewise, I can also post one in the, in the, in the chat here, if that suits, if that's appropriate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Richard Boyd. Thanks, guys. Pleasure being with you. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thanks that you joined. Thank you very much. And Cheers. thanks for everyone that joined as well and uh, shared their you know, views, insights, feedback, and comments. This concludes our community talk today. Thank you all for participating. We have no other question in the chat right now. So we are all good to go. I uh, hope you all have a great rest of the week. Thank you so much. Bye everyone, see you next month.